Hey everyone, uh, 24-7 here, and I'm finally here to talk about Backlash France, and oh, look, this show was so good, oh my god, this show was so fucking good, I, I think I liked it more than Backlash last year, like, guys, this show is so fucking good, Backlash France, I, it, I'm filming this, um, is this Tuesday? Is today Tuesday? It is Tuesday today. I would have filmed this a few days ago, but I had nosebleeds, specifically this nose. Uh, Thursday, Saturday, Monday, yesterday. So that was a uh, fucking awful. And I, I should have done it Sunday. I know I should have, but I had, um... Yeah, I have things to do with my sister, um, I was busy, just so much stuff happened this past weekend, yeah. Uh, let's talk about this show, um, I'm, first off, before I say anything else, the crowd was the best thing about this show, like, absolutely, the crowd was so fucking loud, it was great, like, oh my god, we'll get to certain parts, but oh my god, let's start with this, they were just cheering Kevin Owens, when Kevin Owens came out, because the opening match was the Bloodline, Solo Sokoa, and in his match day, WWE match debut, Tama Tonga, um, versus Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. This, so they were just brawling before they even the bell rang. Which is great, I love when that happens. Um, basically, uh, they were just dancing and having, being super loud for Kevin Owens, and then fucking Randy Orton came out, and they set, I don't ever remember a crowd ever singing Orton's, Randy Orton's theme song, Voices. I love Voices. I love both his theme songs, but, um, I'm kind of glad he didn't change it, because he was going to change it for his return, but he didn't. And then, they, like I said, they were beating the shit out of each other. Just, they just beat the shit out of each other, even before the bell rang, even. And then, Nick Aldis came out, who, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, Nick Aldis is fucking gr uh, my favorite authority figure in years, in actual years. Because only in a few months, he's just done amazing. And then he came out, you know what? If you're not going to do the follow rules, fuck you. Um, street fight. And then it was a street fight. They just kind of beat the shit out of each other. Basically, weapons, they were brawling on the outside. Uh, Kevin Owens did a dive off the, um, the rail, the side rail, basically. And just, pff, yeah. And then Randy Orton was going to do a splash off it, then just came down, jump on him. It was great. Um, this match is so violent, so fun. Uh, they put each other through fucking hell. Uh, and then... Right at the end, Kevin Owens is gonna win. And then, who should make his WWE debut? But Tonga Loa. Tonga Loa debuted for WWE. And I did not see that coming. Like, holy shit. The Gorillas of Destiny are signed to WWE. That's amazing. Uh, they're great. They were one of my favorite tag teams in New Japan. Like, oh my god. We... And they mentioned New Japan Pro Wrestling. What the fuck? They mentioned it multiple times. And for the longest time, I thought Tongaloa and Tama Tonga were brothers. No, they're cousins. Because Tongaloa is Haku's son. Mm, that's not terrifying and freaking me the fuck out. But yeah, also, but yeah, um, with that, Solo Sko and Tama Tonga win. Solo finally wins a match. Woo! He hasn't won a match besides this since beating John Cena at Crown Jewel. That was in November. I mean, I should mention the, um, everything. This show took place May 4th, so lat 2024. And, uh, they seen Charpleau, uh, Metropolitan Leon France in the LDLC Arena. With an attendance of 11,628. It seemed like a small crowd, but oh my god, they were loud. They made up for it, basically. Um, the tagline was this, Nightmares do come true. I'm like, oh, hmm. Also, it's still so weird to see the poster with Cody on it. Like, oh my god. Yeah, and Tangalo, who was Camacho in WWE. I had no idea about that. He was apparently signed there until 2014. I don't remember him. I started watching in 2013. Super weird. 
But yeah, I give the match four stars. This match, I don't think there's gonna be a match that doesn't get lower than three and a half stars. I don't think you. Next, Bailey defends the WWE Women's Championship against Naomi and Tiffany Stratton. This is again really great match. Okay, here's what I'm gonna say about basically every match. Every match was good, made great by the crowd, but it was good. Remember Damian Priest Bad Bunny last year? Basically that. But all the matches. And times 10. This is louder than the Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico crowd. But yeah, these three women had such good chemistry. Tiffany Stratton's great, Naomi is underrated, and Bailey is always great. We've discussed this multiple times that Bailey is amazing. Uh, in a future tier list, I am going to rank women's champions, and I will let you know where the hell Bailey lands. I mean, you might be surprised where she lands. Uh, Bailey's always been one of my favorites. I think Tiffany is going to be a... She's a star. Like, I've, if you had any doubts, besides the fact that um, her at the Elimination Chamber, she was just amazing. She's great. Um, this is a really, really great match. They were just put on a great triple threat match. Nick Bailey and Naomi were on like the same side, basically kind of teaming Stratton, uh, but Stratton basically used that to her advantage and came really close to winning on multiple occasions. Uh, Bailey ends up rolling Naomi for the win, but they shake hands afterwards. Uh, I give the match four stars. This is a really great match. Um, next, Damian Priest defends the World Heavyweight Championship against main event Jay Uso. Oh my god, Jay Uso's entrance, holy fuck, I thought Bad Bunny's entrance was, okay, this was flashier than Bad Bunny's, but I don't think it was as loud as Bad Bunny's. And you keep comparing the two shows, because they're similar, they're so fucking similar. God, when has Backlash become this great? I don't remember the last time I enjoyed a Backlash this much. 2009, which by the way, go watch the review, great review. 2000? 2016? But yeah, Damian Priest is world champion, which I'm still kind of like, I don't believe. Like, I'm glad it happened, but like, Jesus. Yeah, and there was no match, like, 10 minutes long. The shortest match is the women's triple threat, and that was 13 minutes. Like, there's only five matches on this card, but I feel like every ma that means every match got their time. Remember what I said of, like, the production of WWE mixed with, like, the great wrestling of TakeOver? Pfft. Like, gee, no wonder WWE is better. They're just basically large-scale takeovers, which I'm so excited. I I hope I get a takeover soon. God, I want to talk about NXT takeovers so fucking bad. <laughs> oh, my God. But back to this. Um, This is great. Like, Jey Uso came out. He looked great. Damian Priest looks like a main eventer. He just fucking has that aura. Both these men have that aura about them, and that just really helped this match. They just kind of kicked the shit out of each other, to be honest. Um, they just... Man, great work by Jay. Jay's a great underdog. Damian Priest looked very dominant. What was an overwhelming? Jay got some stuff in there as well. Uh, then JD McDonough and Finn Balor came out, and Damian Priest got mad at them, which is really interesting. And then he had... That ended up helping Damian Priest retain he at the South of Heaven for the win. I give the match four stars. They were, like I said, <laughs> this is great. Um, great match from both these guys. I I love both these guys so much. I'm happy Damian Priest's title run gets to be a little longer. I uh, think he's losing the title at Clash of the Castle. I really, because it's in Scotland. It's in Glasgow. Of course he's going to fucking lose it to Drew. Drew is the next World Heavyweight Champion, whether you all want it or not. I know I jinxed it, didn't I? But yeah. And then, afterwards, they, the Judgment Day started beating up Jey Uso. And Damien stopped them. Which is really curious. I'm, I'm curious. And just on Raw last night, I'm really glad I waited to do this review, to be honest. Um, we found out Jay Damien was like, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have gotten mad. Like, I got overwhelmed and upset. You guys are just trying to help me. And they hugged it out. I think there's more to this. I'm going to be so fu I think a Damian Priest babyface turn is going to happen this year. I would not be shocked. I think Damian and, um, we are training babyface. Because there is no goddamn way that 
Rhea Ripley's coming back and not being a babyface. Like, she's a heel. She can do heel shit. But she is the most, one of, if not the most over people in the company. And I think that's going to happen with Damien as well. Next, in probably the weakest match on the card, but it doesn't mean it was bad, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill take on the Kabuki Warriors for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Um, it was a good match. Made great by the crowd. I'd say it was a fine match made good by the crowd, I should say. Like, the crowd really got a little... A little tired at this point, uh, but that would not last long. Uh, this was really good. It was the long. It's the second longest match so far behind the street fight, and I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like the triple threat could use a few more minutes. And I, yeah, I don't think this match should have been almost twenty minutes long. I don't. I think it went a little long, but every, everything else was great. Jay did have more offense than she did in Mania. She looked great. Her and Bianca just have that fucking aura. The Kabuki Warriors are both great. I love it. I think Oscar's actually injured right now. Uh, she was pulled. Um, what is the, what the fuck's going on with everyone getting injured in WWE? I just don't understand right now. What the hell's going on? Why is everyone getting hurt? I don't understand it. Oh well. But yeah, uh, this is really, really fun to watch. I really like this match. I think all the women involved looked really good. I think our, uh, Asuka and Kyrie are great foils. They're so fun. They're like the most unserious, and I kind of adore that about them. And Bianca and Jade are just like... Fuck, these are like, I need that match more than anything in the fucking world right now. Bianca versus Jade, I think that they're, I'm kind of glad they're waiting on Jade versus Bianca so Bian Jade can do more of these WWE style matches, which is going to be really interesting. Uh, yeah, Bianca and Jade beat the Kabuki Warriors for the tag titles. Oh my god, so the ending is really fucking great because they, like, this Jade, like, throws Kyrie up, catches her... In her finisher, I'll just call it a glam sign because I don't remember what the hell it's called. Um, KOD. Cause him in there before the jaded, right? Hit it, and then Bianca Belair hit the KOD on Asuka onto Kyrie to win the titles. Cargill is a champion in WWE after debuting. Yeah, she made her debut at the Rumble. Had her first match at WrestleMania, her first like proper match in Mania, and then a month later is already a champion. She is going to be a star. She's like four horsemen and Bianca, I should say, slowly becoming the veterans. This is the new era with like Tiffany Stratton, Lara Valkyria, Roxanne Perez, Jade Cargill. Like the women's division is going to be fine without the four horsemen. I'm just gonna say it now. Um, and J Bianca made is the ninth WWE Women's Triple Crown Champion. Good for her, she deserves it. Finally, I'll give this match three and a half stars. It was really good. And finally, in your main event, Cody Rhodes takes on AJ Styles. Fun fact, AJ Styles is the only man, um, to wrestle Cody Rhodes and Dust Dusty Rhodes in world title matches, because in TNA, um, yeah, um, he had, like, a purple attire back then, and he, well, he, for that specific night, he had purple attire, so he, what did he do for this match? Wore purple attire, and I love, they mentioned the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, like, what the fuck is going on here? This is insane! So it's noisy, it's very windy right now, and I have the windows up because it is warm as hell in here. Um, this is great, made of a match. Uh, Cody came out and they sang Kingdom. Cody didn't... I still can't believe Cody has the fucking championship. Like, it's still, like, completely unreal to me. You know, like, I had, like, such a euphoria of Cody winning, and I don't think it has worn off yet. Like, I used to rewatch that match all the time, but, like, fuck, man. Cody just... Tell all the people who say Cody's going to be a bad champion, just fuck you. You're wrong. You're so wrong. I, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. He's doing so good right now. But yeah, um... Yeah. Like, and AJ Styles is great. We love AJ Styles. He's so underrated. Also, to anyone who thinks AJ Styles is fucking wash. I don't know what to tell you, man. It just thought it was great. Um, right before the match started, they played Cody's theme song, right? 
And then as the, when the music stopped, because they had, what, like, in the ring, they tr turn off the light, and it has the challenger, champion thing, which, by the way, I fucking love that now that they do that, that they have the challenger, champion, they show the names there, and I'm like, oh my god, this feels very professional, and I adore that. I love this new production since Kevin Dunn was left. The camera shots. Everything. Fuck. Um, but yeah, then the crowd kept singing Kingdom <laughs> Like, they sang the rest of the song. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. This crowd's amazing. This match went ten minutes longer than the tag match. This match was half an hour long. And I could not have been happier. Uh, these guys are fucking great. And they just had a great match. A good main event match, you know? Like, it's two guys, no bullshit. Just having the best match they possibly could. And it was a dream match. And I'm glad we got this match. I'm really happy that we got this match. Um, hey, Andy... They had, like, perfect counters for each, every, each of their own moves that they had, and I really liked that. Like, they studied, they pay attention, they're students of the game, they get that. Um, Cody slams Styles through the French announce table, boom. And then he hit the Cody cutter, and didn't botch it this time. I know, I'm making a joke about Mania. And then he hit the crossroads and w retained. I give it four stars. This is a great match. I don't know what to say, guys. This is a great fucking show. Like, if Mania 40 isn't my favorite show, it's up. this is, for Mania 40 is probably gonna be my favorite show of the year. And then Dynasty, and then, no, this is above Dynasty, I think. Because it was short, it was only, it wasn't even three hours, it was two hours and 50 minutes, not even. Like, it was just, like, a sh good show. It didn't need to be fucking five hours long to be good like Dynasty was. I love Dynasty, but it was long as hell. This this, this isn't. I give the show 9.5 out of 10. If the women's title, women's tag title match was a little shorter, it might have been five stars. I don't know what else I could really say to improve this show. This show's fantastic. I fucking loved the hell out of this match. No, I don't know what show is next. Like, live show, I think. Correct me if I am wrong. Is it Double or Nothing? It might be Double or Nothing. But we'll see. If that's not the show you're getting next, next week, Zach picked his first random pay-per-view. Oh, and it's a doozy. It's a doozy. <laughs> it's the horror show at Extreme Rules from, I think it was 2020, right? Let me pull up this. Yeah, the horror show at Extreme Rules, yeah, it was 2020. God, this is good. What in the fuck? Yeah. Oh my god, that show took place on my birthday. <laughs> oh god, Zach said he's already started watching it. By the way, he just he texted me a little bit ago. Oh god, because it's like 10.38 right now. He texted me at uh, 10.07 said, I started watching Extreme Rules this morning. I totally forgot Cesaro and Shinsuke were a tag team jammies together. And I said, me too. <laughs> yeah, this... Yeah, it's... Yeah, um... Oh, man, I hope... <laughs> it's just a mess. The Wyatt Swamp fight, the eye for an eye match. Um, it's weird. I, uh, this show took place on my 18th birthday. woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Uh, Have fun with that, Zach. Hope you're enjoying it. Ugh. I will see you guys next time. I have no idea what I'm reviewing next. I haven't even told. Zach will tell you next week. But I hope you guys enjoyed the review this week. I will see you guys next time. Woo! See you guys.